Now I love WordPress. As you probably tell, the channel is dedicated to it, but while it's a great platform, it does have some shortcomings. And the one thing that really, really, really annoys me is the fact they spent so much time updating to Gutenberg and all the things that brings with it. However, they haven't touched one key thing inside the dashboard of WordPress in years. The media files. It's terrible. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a simple platform to use. And if you have 50, 60 images in there and files and so on, it's perfectly fine. But once you start to have a much more complex website, it really doesn't work very well. Well, today we're going to take a look at a couple of options that allow us to get a little bit more organized inside our media library. So if this is something that annoys you, stick around and join me. I'm going to take you through just a couple of plugins we can use to hopefully streamline that process and make it less of a headache. So as I say, I use WordPress a lot and that one bugbear that I have is the ability to organize my files in a much more logical fashion. Out of the box, it just doesn't have it, which I kind of think is crazy. So let's take a look at a couple of options. There are free versions and then there are pro versions. And if you're a power user, you probably want to take a look at the pro version. For your average person that doesn't have thousands and thousands of files and massive organization, the free version should be perfectly fine. Please be aware, I am not sponsored by any of these plugins. These are things that I've tested out for myself while trying to find a solution to this problem that really annoys me. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. This is the channel where I help you get more of your WordPress website. If you enjoy the content we do, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so let's just jump over and take a look at the dashboard in WordPress, see what we're starting off with, and let's take a look at some of the plugins we can use to streamline this process of working with our media. So when you log into your media library in a typical copy of WordPress, this is the type of thing you see. We have a list of different images and files and so on that we've got uploaded to our particular server. We can switch between views. At the moment, we're looking at this view, which shows us on an icon version, or we can jump over to a list view, which will give us a little bit more information, the author, where it's uploaded to the date and so on and so forth. We can filter things out based upon various different criteria. So we can say all media items, images, unattached images, or ones that are associated with my particular user account. We can also go through and filter things down by date. So we can use these in combination with each other to filter things down. And that's okay. We also have the option on the right hand side then to come in and we can go through and search for things on there. And that'll search through our media library. So it is pretty basic at the moment. So. For me, this is something that works perfectly fine for a couple of images, but once you start to get a larger library, it doesn't work. So I was looking for a plugin to expand this, the two things it had to do, make media management considerably easier and more intuitive, something more akin to working with a Windows PC or a Mac. And it also needed to be set up in such a way that if I wanted to revert back to the normal setup, those folders and things that I created are virtual folders. So in other words, they're not created on the server and organized everything on there. And then if you swap that plugin out for some other plugin, you lose all that structure and everything is all over the place. So with that in mind, I tested a couple of different ones out and I'm going to show you the two that I almost settled on and the one I kind of picked. So let's go and take a look at the plugins. Let's jump over to our plugin section and we'll say install plugins. Now I've deactivated these at the moment and the two we're going to take a look at is Filebird Lite and Mediamatic Lite. So let's go first of all and take a look at Filebird Lite. Now these are very, very similar and this is Ninja Team. So if you've seen Ninja Forms and so on, it's the same team behind that. So you're going to know you've got a good development company behind this particular plugin. If we hop over to the WordPress plugin repository, we've got some more information, some installation instructions, a video on how to use this and so on. So you can see it's got pretty good ratings. It's got a nice friendly user interface, all the kind of things you'd want to see inside any kind of media management or file management setup. So I'll put a link in the description for this so you can check this out yourself. But like I say, we're going to use the free version. So let's just jump back in and let's activate that plugin and take a look at what it does for us. So we'll activate it, let it go through the activation process. There we go, everything is in place. Now let's just jump over back into our media library and take a look at what's going on. So let's put these into the icon mode. You can see now on the left hand side, we've got a file structure set up, which is showing a range of different folders, things that I've created. If I click on any of these, anything I've created, you can see it'll tell me how many images are associated with any particular folder. If we click on all files, there's all our files back and categorized you can see there's 18 files in there 
So we've got a nice simple organization structure. We can click, take a look what's in there. All our normal filtering options are still available at the top. If we click on the image, that'll open up and show us the typical attachment details you'd expect to see inside WordPress itself. So all the normal functions are still there. We just have this option on the left hand side now to create folders and put our images into those folders. Creating a new folder is very easy. We can simply come over to add new folder, click on there. You can see that'll insert a new folder because we had the three folder selected. That's going to create a subsection inside there. And we could just call this 3A, for example, and say, OK, that now creates that virtual folder in there. And it shows us that virtual folder on the right hand side as well. So you could easily create something that would be set up to sort of have your articles and then inside your articles you may want to break things down by year and then inside there you might have another folder structure that has the dates and so on the months however you wanted to sort of set this up because they're virtual folders it has no effect on the front end of the website this is just a very simple way of being able to organize things in the back end now there's one thing you need to be aware of in the free version you are limited to the number of folders you can use if i'm not mistaken i think it's around 10 and I would recommend taking a look and like I say, for most people, that's probably going to be more than enough. If you have a very complex website with lots and lots of images and you want to create a really complex structure, then obviously the pro version is probably going to be better for you. Okay, so we've seen how it organizes things. What else do we have? Well, if we come over to any of these folders, we can click on a folder and we can rename it if we want to. So we could just say this is going to be called articles, for example, click on OK. There we go, it now updates that. Doesn't have any effect on anything else. Our 3A still sits inside there. So let's just click on that. We'll say rename that and we'll call this one 01 January. There we go, click OK. Now we're not limited to just renaming items. If we want to, we can quickly and easily reorder things. So let's just say, for example, I put January in the wrong location. I can easily drag that up and drop that somewhere else or make it its own folder in its own right. So you see, it's very quick and easy for that to happen. Once we've done that, we can click open up a folder and then we can upload any images that we want. So let's just simply drag and drop this image that I want into the January folder, click, and there we go. So image is now uploaded into that folder. And it tells us we've got one file inside there. So pretty cool, pretty easy. And on top of that, we could also move files around inside the folders. So we've got the January folder open with the image I just uploaded, and I can simply grab that, drag that, and drop that onto any of the other folders that I want, let go, and that'll reorganize everything. And you can see now we've got one file inside the Woohoo folder, nothing inside the January folder. So click on the folder for Woohoo, and there we go. There's our image inside there. So you can see it works in a very, very familiar fashion. If you're used to working with any kind of computer, you can drag and drop those folders around, do whatever you want. Finally, if we want to, we can click on a folder, click on delete and say, are you sure you want to delete it? And we say, yes, we do. And there we go. That's now been deleted. So it's very intuitive, very easy and also pretty quick. We can, if we want to resize this, if we're dealing with large folders or a small screen or large screen. So it's very simple to work with. So that's the FileBird plugin. Let's take a look now at the other option we've got available to us. Come back over to our plugins, into install plugins. And once we're in there, we'll deactivate the FileBird light. So we'll deactivate that. We'll say skip and deactivate. And one thing I want to show you before we load up and install Mediamatic, I want to just jump back onto our media library, click into our library, and you can see that all our images in there. So because we're working with virtual folders, then nothing is a permanent change. We're not creating anything permanently. So if we disable the plugin, it doesn't matter. Again, if we come back over into our plugins, back into the install plugin section, scroll down and we'll reactivate Mediamatic Lite. Now, again, like I say, with FileBird and Mediamatic, I've been testing these out and creating different virtual folders. So we should find when we activate Mediamatic, that'll load back up all the virtual folders and reorganize everything based upon my original setup. So let's activate it. Give it a second or so. There we go. That's active. What we'll do now is just jump back into our media library and take a look in there. And you can see there's all our folder structure. At the moment, we're looking at everything. We've got all the images on the right hand side and all our filters still in exactly the same way as before. If we come over, we've got all files, categorized files, and also the folders. So we can click on properties, for example, and you can see there's all my images for the properties folder. Again, if I click, you can see we get the normal attachment details window for the WordPress media library. So we can go in and we can set up our alternative text, captions, descriptions, and so on. All very familiar. So come back out of that. Again, we can come over to any of these and we can click and activate them. But what we can do with this one is we've got add new at the top, which will work in exactly the same way as you expect. So we'll click add new because thumbnails were selected. That's going to create a subfolder. So we'll call this subfolder. 
and we'll just click on the little tick mark. So there's our subfolder. If we want to, we can drag that around and again, make this its own folder, click on it, but there's no rename option. That's because we need to select this option on the right hand side. Click on there, we've got new folder, rename and delete. So let's rename that and we'll change that from being subfolder to main folder. And we'll click the tick. So you can see everything is laid out exactly as you expect it to. It's all very intuitive. With this, you have a slightly streamlined interface where we've got that option to click on the little three dots to get some extra functions. And if we want to come in and delete that, we can delete that and say, yep, we say delete. So that will get rid of that. And like we saw in the previous plugin and this one, just by deleting those, we just delete the reference to that folder. We don't delete the images inside it. So it's always worth bearing in mind that you're doing nothing that's permanent. None of these changes are going to stay with your media library unless, of course, you physically delete a particular file. So, for example, if we come into the property section, if I chose a file on here, clicked on it and then said delete permanently, as its name would say, we are going to then delete that completely and literally from our library, but not the folder structures. OK, I hope that makes sense. Again, the final thing we have is we can resize these just to make sure that we've got everything laid out using the real estate that we have available on the screen size and resolution we're working with. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and both work in a very similar fashion. Just for me, I found Mediamatic was just a little bit more stable. When I was dealing with FileBird, I found sometimes I tried to move a file and nothing would actually happen, which got a little frustrating. However, like I say, I'm sure that was just a simple little bug maybe in the system that I had set up, or maybe a file update is now rectified that and everything is working as you expect it to. Like I say, these are the free versions. Both of them have limitations on the number of folders that you can create. But if you're dealing with a smaller site where you don't need tons and tons of folders, either the, the, the sort of the free versions should be more than adequate for most users, but the pro version just basically gives you access to more folders. As always, I'll put the links in the description so you can check these out for yourself and see the limitations of the free version. But I recommend taking a look at both of these and seeing which one you think works best for you when it comes down to organizing the files on your media library inside WordPress. It's just so much easier and a lot more intuitive to work with. So there we go. There's a couple of plugins, both free and pro versions, that should help you organize your media libraries in a much more logical fashion. Do you use any of these yourself or could you see yourself using any of them? If you do, let me know in the comment section below. And if you find something you think is better, again, both free and commercial, let us know. Put the links in the comment section below so I can take a look at them and we can all benefit from great options to organize our media. As always, if you enjoyed the content, you'd like to support the channel, please consider using those affiliate links in the description below. It costs you no more money, but it does help us support the channel and help us create more great content for you moving forward. As always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. It's perfectly fine. Until next time, my name's been Paul C, and this has been WP Tuts. Take care.